Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black discard deck which got a very important tool in Bloomboro with Bandit's Talent. A two mana class enchantment starts out by making the opponent discard two cards unless they discard a no land card. At level two for just one more mana it turns into a win condition saying at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep if that player has one or fewer cards in hand they lose two life so that's reminiscent of the rack and various effects. And then at level three we can also turn this into a card draw engine saying at the beginning of our draw step we get to draw an additional card for each opponent who has one or fewer cards in hand. So Bandit's Talent kind of does it all, and then we can also support it with Liliana of the Veil in this deck, the plus one making each player discard a card, so it is symmetrical, although we can often start by using the minus two ability first, where a target player sacrifices a creature, so this is perfect if the opponent only has one creature in play, we've got plenty of other removal spells to help support it. And then the minus six ultimate can also be quite achievable, where we get to split the opponent's permanence into two piles, and they only get to keep one of those. And then we've got a bunch more discard effects, starting out at one mana with Hopeless Nightmare, also makes the opponent lose two life, can also maybe sacrifice it later to scry two, and then a Ruthless Negotiation makes the opponent exile a card from their hand, can also be flashed back later for five mana, in which case we also get to draw a card in addition to making them exile a card from their hand, so that can also be nice if we're maybe plussing our Liliana and are otherwise empty-handed, once we get to land five we can still maybe flash this back out of the graveyard. And then at two mana, of course, a full set of Deep Cavern Bat, not technically discard, just exiling a card from the opponent's hand for as long as we control the bat. And then a 1-1 Life Linker can also maybe chip in to get a bit of damage across. And then we've got plenty of removal to keep up against all the aggro decks in the best of one format, with four copies of Cutdown, three copies of Go for the Throat as more instant speed removal, and then a three copies of Virtue of Persistence, which will shrink an opposing creature down, gain us two life, so this is excellent against a red aggro if they have creatures like Heartfire Hero or Cacophony Scamp, which could otherwise deal additional damage on the way out. And then having this chilling in the adventure zone is also pretty good if we're starting to plus our Liliana, since we are forced to potentially discard our own spells as well, but if we can just keep hitting our land drops and eventually get to seven mana, we can still cast this out of exile. And then uh, this can also be a win condition, just stealing the opponent's creatures out of their graveyard. Then we also have Preacher as another potential card draw engine, or a way to generate 1-1 one, one life-linking vampire tokens, also pretty good against aggro. And as a 2-4 it does not die to opposing cutdowns or virtue of persistence. And then a shield root of course remains a staple and standard, great with our bandit's talent especially, getting additional life back, and can also be a way to stabilize against aggro while being a great win condition in and of itself. And at 5 mana I'm playing a 1 at Deepest Betrayal, also quite synergistic in a discard deck, potentially making additional 1-1 one, one bat tokens. And then at 2 copies of Gixus Command as our answer to go white decks, there's also some 3 mana sweepers we could play instead, giving minus 2 minus 2 exiling creatures in the process, but I've been liking Gixus Command as it's also Way to maybe get back creatures out of our graveyard and the plus one counters and lifelink can also come up and then our mana base has some very useful lands as well playing two copies of blast zone as another answer to various one drops or maybe an answer to posing artifacts and enchantments which mono black otherwise can struggle with and then mishra's foundry can be another win condition as well just built into our mana base turning into a 2-2 creature it can also be a way of protecting our planeswalkers and then we do need 18 swamps so no room for demolition field even though it can also come in handy dealing with opposing creature lands or other lands with activated abilities but that's a choice you make and I've been liking Blast Zone and Mishra's Foundry so far. Another card I'm not playing is the Hostile Investigator which in my experience by the time you cast it the opponent's unlikely to have too many cards left in hand so we're not going to make too many clue tokens off of it so I've also not found that card to be super needed for a discard deck but of course it will have its moments where it can take over a game. So yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keeper. Got a 2 3 4 curve. Facing red with turn 1 scamp, so it is the cell sword variety. Which can certainly present a lot of damage out of nowhere. We are on the draw, so definitely on the back foot. But yeah, if we can keep their board clear with go for the throat into Liliana. We can make it harder for the opponent to keep damaging us. Manifold Mouse is next. Can give the challenger double strike and trigger Valiant at the same time. So, yeah, I think go for the throat uh, challenger is reasonable. Uh, could also take out Manifold Mouse before it triggers. 
Either way, Liliana is going to be a little awkward in the face of Cacophony Scamp, since they will be able to sack the Scamp and then finish off Liliana with the one damage. So, ideally we find some other play we can make. A Deep Cavern Bat, I think, counts. Try and set that up, and maybe have Shieldreds gain us some more life back. Although the scam can always essentially finish off our Deep Cavern Bat by sacrificing itself. Opponent's got another Manifold Mouse in hand. Monstrous Rage, probably the scariest card here. Opponent can now play Manifold Mouse with Offspring. Which is what they do. So they can give Double Strike and Trample. And then next turn with an Ire, they could represent even more damage. So we probably have to make them discard before we get Shieldred down. Yeah, if I were to trade for Scamp, then opponent gets Monstrous Rage back, and I can only make them discard one card next turn with either Talent or Liliana. So I don't think I can afford that. But, uh, yeah, Pono could just decide to sack this camp anyway to get their Monstrous Rage back. In which case I could have at least gained one life and prevented one damage. But our opponent's happy to keep Scamp on the battlefield, and Gix's command was huge. So now we just deal with the Dreadmaw's Ire, prevent taking too much damage, and then next turn Gix's command can clean up quite nicely. Maybe Liliana Plus can soak up some more damage as opposed to playing the talent. This is my home. Even though I have to get rid of my own talent now since I want to keep shielded. And then I may as well attack since I'm not planning to block. Just want to keep our life total high and then Gix's commands can clean up next turn. I guess on the flip side I could have discarded shielded and gotten it back with Gix's command. Especially if they decide to take out the Deep Cavern Bat. If they don't take out the Bat, I can put plus one counters on it instead. So our opponent will finish off Liliana. You're gonna need a good undertaker. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not interested in dying today. And our opponent does now sacrifice to cash in the scam to take out the bat. So they have a monstrous rage in hand. And uh, yeah, that does mean that at least now with Gix's command I can cleanly wipe their board, otherwise they could have kept one creature in play. So it's not a bad thing that we discarded the bandit's talent necessarily. So they can monstrous rage to save from destroying power two or less but that creature would still die to each opponent sacrifices creature with highest power, since they resolve top to bottom. So our opponent keeps Monster's Rage in hand, still potentially a threat. But Shieldred can hopefully stabilize us here. Opponent's got a Heartfire Hero, yeah, that one's extremely scary with Monster's Rage. So I'll be forced to trade Shieldred for Heartfire Hero. Although I guess it's not like this camp where they can sacrifice the hero if it connects. But uh, yeah, if they top deck a cell sword, we just die. So maybe the play is to just take it. And then next turn the hero is going to be a little bit smaller again. Can also use our Mishra's Foundry perhaps. Yeah, I guess trading now doesn't make too much sense when they would get the full benefit of Monstrous Rage. Opponent actually doesn't cast it, that's surprising. Maybe they're afraid of a removal spell. And now Blast Zone gives us some instant speed removal for Heartfire Hero. So that should uh, help us out quite a bit. Now Shieldred will start gaining life. And uh, could still attack with the Mishra's Foundry here. How does the clock change? Shieldred essentially clocking the opponent for 6 per turn. So it doesn't really change the math too much if Foundry gets involved. 
So I'll keep it back as an extra blocker just in case. And then now I'm fine taking one from Heartfire Hero, but if they move all in with Monstrous Rage, we can sack the blast soon. Don't think I have a reason to level it up. So we'll just take one. This is a fine exchange. Could have also blocked with Foundry to kind of force them to use it. And now a negotiation is not bad either. So can cast it now. Opponent gets rid of Monstrous Rage. Could flash back the negotiation and then keep Shouldered back for a turn. But let's just uh, apply more pressure. And then I'm not opposed to making the play we described last turn of animating Foundry to get in front of Heartfire Hero. And then I can still sack Blast soon. Opponent has a scamp as well, so now two creatures that die to Blast soon. And then I could technically also use Mishra's Foundry for mana to activate Blast soon. But uh, yeah, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A Nightmare does have kind of a sneaky synergy with Blast Zone. If you need to deal with some one drops, you get to scry two in the process. So that can be a pretty decent interaction. Well, let's see what we're up against. Mountain discarded, opponent Arachdos Callers now. And a Vine Lasher, so opponent on Lizards. Okay. I don't think I need to go for the throw at Vine Lasher. Let's just hit them with a double discard. Put on discarding the Sorcery Speed Removal. Fell. Getting a lot of comments why I'm playing go for the throw it over Fell, but the instant speed just makes a world of difference. And now a Flame Caller exiled. Our Glass Mentor can provide card advantage, so that is kind of a must answer for us. This turn, it doesn't do anything, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna wanna go for the throats before they get a chance to do too much with it. And then I think I do need to play Blast soon, in case I end up discarding a land to Liliana. Pass a turn. Opponent plays a land, and then. Now is probably a good time to take out the Mentor. Can't wait for it to attack. Alright, so opponent's left with Vine Lasher and one unknown in hand. And uh, yeah, we can just plus Liliana now to get rid of it. Since Vine Lasher is not going to apply meaningful pressure to Liliana. If this is instant speed removal for Planeswalkers, of course, we would regret it, but it was a god, in fact. O'Hara Ashonil. Doesn't uh, work with Vine Lasher, only red cards, but there may be some other synergies with the other lizards. Andrew really go for the throat, so can just go for the throat Vine Lasher and plus. Could also minus and keep go for the throat in hand, but I think it's probably fine to just... Uh, Add more loyalty to our Liliana. Since most of the lizard creatures are not going to have haste. I'm tired of your secrets. I guess I didn't see the restless vents in their mana base. There was maybe a reason to just minus Liliana, keep up go for the throats. Now we might struggle to deal with the vents. Opponent discarding a Mentor. Alright, Bandit's Talent was excellent. So, play that. Get their last card. Can start leveling up. And that will make for a very nice card draw engine. And then Liliana will kind of force them to use Vents to attack it for another few turns. Which means that if they don't draw lands, they'll probably end up discarding whatever they drew into. But did find a land, so that's good value for them. They could also use the vents to maybe look for a land to get in play. You know, I think you look 
But yeah, Liliana bought us a lot of time. And we can level up. And then, yeah, I don't need to activate Liliana, I can just pass. Make them waste another turn activating the vents. At some point we'll draw a cut down or go for the throat to take it out. Only instant speed removal works. Put on discarding their own removal spell. Looking for creatures they can cast. And now we get to draw two. Another bandit's talents. Those are pretty good in multiples too. And then hope to uh, pick up an additional land to eventually cast Gix's command. Although at the moment I don't have any creatures to return. Bandit's talent also win condition, pwn is down to 8. So we would be out racing a Restless Vents here. If I minus Liliana, our opponent could animate the vent still, even though it's tapped to sacrifice it instead of the Flame Caller. Don't know if that's what they want to do here. But I think that's still our best play, and yeah, our opponent scoops it up, they're just too far behind, we're drawing two cards per turn, about to be three, so there's no catching up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, we've got what looks like a Keeper. Opponent green-white, maybe a rabbit deck. Start with a Nightmare. Haven't given it too much thought if it's better to Nightmare or Negotiation on turn 1. Opponent Amazon Colors, so some sort of Amazon Control deck with lots of sweepers. So if I play the bat, there's a decent chance it gets removed. So I might be better off going double 1-drop discard. And then they might get rid of their removal spells for the bat, at which point it can maybe take something else. Opponent exiling a cutdown, so yeah, that was already an answer to the Deep Cavern Bat. And another cutdown discarded. Opponent does have a Cornucopia for more ramp. And now we face an interesting decision. Could play Preacher to start drawing cards. Or we can play the Bat to maybe take away an impactful 4 or 5 mana play. And then Shieldred can maybe carry us to victory. I'll go with the Bat here. Alright, opponent had two lands left, so playing Preacher would have worked out a little bit better, but now we do have that information. If we draw a Bandit's Talent, we can make them discard a bunch of lands. And our opponent's just gonna start activating Mirex to make tokens, it seems. So, I'm fine playing a Shieldred here. That's the fastest clock, even though Preacher drawing cards would be nice. Can expect our opponent to draw into a couple sweepers at some point. And our opponent's on empty. So they must not have top decked what they wanted to. Or they drew a sweeper and they want us to overextend. Playing Preacher here is maybe a little bit ambitious since we have enough pressure in play as is. Can still sack a Nightmare to Scry or level a Blast soon. So let's just pass. And yep, yeah, there's a White Sense for 5, so our opponent was tricking us. So that's gonna gain them a ton of life back. And give them 5 Mites to start poisoning us to death. So... What do we want to do? Sack Nightmare over, take a Blast soon, I think. And then I can still cut down a token. We did find a Bandit's Talents. Is that still what I need? For now, playing a Preacher maybe makes a little bit more sense. So we don't die to poison. Don't think I need to keep another cut down. Yeah, White Suns for 5 is kind of the threshold they needed to wipe the board. At least no removal for Preacher, it seems. And they can start activating Mirex twice per turn here. 
So yeah, the poison's gonna add up quickly. We can attack with Preacher. Nightmare, play another Preacher. But we'll see what we draw first. Now I can play Talents and play another Preacher. And maybe start leveling that up. Opponent had a Demolition Field left. So yeah, opponent making two tokens can poison me for four. So this is currently a race the opponent is winning with double Mirex. But staying back is not going to help me either, since our opponent gets to make two replacement tokens. So, yeah, I think we're just dead here, unless Preacher draws into some answers. Gix's command would help. Virtue only answers one token. And a land. So... Can level up the bandit's talents to make them lose some life. Negotiation gives me a redraw, but there's no one mana card that saves me here. So yeah, we are just dead. Had plenty of life gain, but no answer to double Mirex. And the deadly cover-up left in hand, so yeah, sweepers plus Mirex as your win condition is kind of what our opponent's plan is. And yeah, it worked out quite well here, just making sure they kept hitting their land drops and discarding their removal. And then eventually they'll draw into a sweeper to stabilize while Mirex does the rest. And yeah, lands with activated abilities are a pretty good way to beat a discard deck if you can just keep hitting those land drops. Eventually you can activate them and take over. And we just didn't draw the right answers this time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a third and fourth land for sure, but uh, for now we'll keep. Opponents also maybe on a discard deck. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to keep Deepest Betrayal in hand for long, so may as well get rid of it now. Return the favor. Opponent discarding a Swamp. Opponent does have the Deep Cavern Bat, probably taking Go for the Throat. And then we don't have a 2-mana play. Ah, never mind. Get to return the favor now. And opponent's got a blood letter and a bandit's talent. So talent is long term, maybe the more problematic card. Yeah, I mean if we draw third land for Liliana, we can deal with both blood letter and deep cavern bat pretty easily. If we deal with bat, we get back a go for the throat as well. So it's gonna be virtue of persistence instead. Which is still fine to just cast here. Get back, go for the throw to answer Blood Letter. Now we still only have two lands, but that's all we need to cast or go for the throat. Bonus stuck on three, so they might have some expensive spells in hand as well. And as much as I would like to use Liliana to answer that, I'll just go for it now. And then we can start plussing Liliana instead. Don't think I'll be able to keep Gix's command in hand for long. And opponent had a Rotten Mouth Viper left. Could also be good in a discard deck. Opponent's more likely to be empty-handed by the time you play it, and then it can take over. Good with cards like Hopeless Nightmare and Tiny Bones joins up. Now the pickpockets. Mills another Liliana, Shieldred, which we cannot cast. So, could empty the opponent's hand by plussing. Could also just minus Tiny Bones, which I don't hate. I've always hated crowds. And then play Preacher.
Braids is next, can sack Tiny Bones, I can sack Nightmare, so I don't mind that exchange. And I actually milled a negotiation with Tiny Bones, so that was good for us. Can dig for lands. And then minus Liliana again. This is boring and fine. I know when I'm can play a shield root and then attack. Gaining us life when Preacher draws a card. And then we still have a Liliana left, so our opponent's pretty far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Some early nightmares. Cut down for aggro. And then hopefully shield root to stabilize and take over. Well, let's see what we're up against. Opponent discards a mountain. And a cacophony scamp. So this is the uh, Callous Sellsword build of the deck. Okay, Bandit's Talents, not a bad draw. So I can go Nightmare, keep up cutdown, or play Talents. Yeah, I think I go for Talent here. And then keep the cheaper cards for later. We'll still have to decide whether or not to level up Bandit's Talent next turn. Opponent playing Coming in Hot. And they are playing Green as well, plots a Slick Shot that we cannot make them discard anymore. But Swamp was a good draw, since now we can play the Nightmare, level up talent, and still keep up cut down. And I probably want to wait for them to cast a pump spell to then cut down in response. If they have a second pump spell, then they might get their creature to survive. So that would be bad. But hopefully with all this discard, we made it so that's less likely. So two cards left in hand. I'll just take one from Scamp. But I'm not prepared to go for it yet. Could cut down end of turn. And then if they want to save the scamp, so be it. At least we don't need to deal with scamp dying and maybe taking out a shield roots. And then slick shot by itself might struggle to deal 18 damage. Yeah, let's try that. Alright, that works. Didn't want to do it in the middle of combat in case they had enough pump spells to save it. Did draw another cut down, although it's still tempting to just tap out for shield root here. Leveling up talent, also an option, but let's get Shieldred in play first. They're unlikely to have many clean answers to it. And the life gain's gonna be pretty important. Alright, opponent has the Questing Druid's Adventure, Finding Scamp, and another Questing Druid. At least those cards are in exile, so opponent still had one card in hand, losing two to the talent. But they do now have quite a few extra cards to maybe work with if they decide to play those cards from exile, which in turn maybe gives us the opportunity to discard the cards they have in hand. Opponent starts with Questing Druid, so they're still not committing the Slick Shot, it seems. They found a Monstrous Rage, which they have to cast this turn, so I guess they're going for it. And then they would still have a green mana left. With the roll token on Slick Shot, it's still a 2-3, so still within range of cutdown. But if they have another pump spell, they can maybe get it out of range. So a very interesting turn here. Opponent's got another Slick Shots. So now all those Exalt cards will go to waste. And we found a go for the Throat, so this is kind of the best case scenario. We can answer both of their creatures. I should probably cut down now. So we don't run into any troubles. And honestly, if I just go for the throat, they might just give up in case they have some green hexproof trick. Or I could wait for them to commit an extra pump spell since just taking one from the slick shot is fine. Now they can still play Questing Druid. We also have a Mishra's Foundry that can turn into a threat. And Bandit's Talent is also doing damage. Ooh, opponent found a Witch Docker Frenzy. Fair enough. So that's an answer to Shield Root. So the game goes on. Can take out a slick shot now. And then either level up talent or attack with foundry. Which would put them to one. Deepest betrayal, still missing a land. Yeah, I guess putting them to one and then threatening to win with bandit's talent is fine. So they need to keep enough cards in hand so talent doesn't trigger. And they cannot even tap this for mana to cast a Questing Druid now. 
and now they're just gonna die to the talent. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a pretty balanced hand. Could use a couple more lands, I suppose, but... Uh, at least we've got the early interaction against aggro. Put on a green-white, maybe a rabbit's deck. So let's have a look. Never mind, it is an Abzan control deck, so similar to what we've already faced. And yeah, our hand's not particularly well set up for it. Opponent's got multiple answers for the bats. Probably still wanna take the virtue, force them to use cut down. No strong arguments for either one. Maybe taking cut down makes more sense so they don't have that instant speed removal for later. But if I take virtue and they cut down, then they can go cornucopia while having cut down available. So maybe that's a reason to do it this way. And Liliana was a great draw, although opponent does have Get Lost to destroy it. But that is a way to kind of get rid of your removal spells against control while still impacting their hand. So they will have to decide if they want to play Cornucopia or immediately answer Liliana. And for now they also didn't get to cut down bats, now they do get to double spell cut down and get lost. Nope, goes for Cornucopia, which they drew in the meantime. And they can still cut down the bat, but that means we get to plus Liliana for an extra turn. Opponent discarding a herd migration. And then now cut down the bats. Now at least I could consider attacking with Mishra's Foundry. Now that there's no threat of instant speed removal for it. And there's also the prairie that we still need to worry about. But a uh, cut down was not gonna answer that cleanly. Could have been a reason to maybe hang on to go for the throat a little bit longer since we're pretty far from casting a 7-mana Virtue. All right, let's uh, animate Foundry and maybe just use the map token instead of attacking, since I kind of need to hit my land drops. And then do it again. And another Liliana. We'll be under pressure from the Prairie, perhaps, but I think it's still an above-average draw. Could also play Shieldred in the meantime, but given their opponent probably has more removal in hand, we can try to flush it out. So Virtue is gone. Tap land means Prairie cannot attack. And now I can plus Liliana in combination with Deep Cavern Bats, get rid of our Virtue. Drop or we can commit Shield Root and hope their last card's not an answer to it, as we see a Rex discarded. Yeah, the safest play would be to play the Bats. It does give the opponent the opportunity to animate Prairie and pressure Liliana, whereas Shield Root could maybe prevent that. Yeah, alright, let's play Shield Root. If their last card's removal, I'm gonna be sad, but it could just be some expensive 6 or 7 mana card. Sunfall makes sense as well. So that does answer Shieldred, sadly. Can empty the opponent's hand in a multitude of ways. I do want to keep taking up Liliana. I'm tired of your Foundry is a 3-3, so it could trade for a Prairie, since it only pumps other creatures. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And then next turn we can ult Liliana.
They're a little bit short of both incubator and priory attacking. Now I don't have to ultimate Liliana, I can just wait another turn and plus to keep it in play. And then for now, could play Deep Cavern Bat as an extra blocker, or just play Blast Zone, discard the bat. And then Foundry still fine to trade for Prairie. Yeah, it's a little bit risky if they draw a Get Lost. But if I ultimate, we essentially get rid of three mana sources. That's probably still good enough to kind of win the game here, since I can Gix's Command back. I guess uh, Shieldred did get exiled, so it would just be Deep Cavern Bat. Alright, so maybe I do just plus for another turn to try and keep our Planeswalker in play. It. And I hope they don't draw too well here. So Priory gets busy. Wait for that to turn sideways. And then animate Foundry. And then I could still take a Blast soon. that trades. I can now ultimate Liliana without losing it. And then I probably want to isolate their black sources. So Swamp Cornucopia, keep only green-white lands. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just pass a turn. Wouldn't mind hitting some more land drops. Opponent found a soul partition for Liliana, fair enough. Blast Zone could also be an answer to the Cornucopia. But I do need to find a threat here, so I think for now I still replay Liliana. And get her last card, keep Gix's command, which can return the Deep Cavern Bats at the very least. And this was an excellent draw. I think I'm fine plussing Liliana to potentially present another ultimate. You won't be outsmarting me. And the opponent scoops it up so the deepest betrayal can go the distance. Awesome. So yeah, overall this mono black discard deck should be favored against most red aggro decks, even though you can still lose to them if they have a particularly fast start and you maybe don't have the early removal for their creatures. That can certainly happen if you focus too much on the discard spells and the opponent just kind of takes you out in the meantime. So it's not a 100% win rate against red by any means, but it should still favor the discard deck, especially if you have enough early removal spells at the ready. And then when it comes to some of these grindier matchups like Amazon Control or Blue White Control, those can potentially still kind of go over the top of what you're doing, especially if they have creature lands or other lands with activated abilities, since I did not include Demolition Field in my mana base, which is a choice, but I found Blast Zone to be pretty useful as another answer to potential one drops can also answer artifacts and enchantments which you can otherwise be called to and then uh, Mishra's Foundry has also been excellent as an extra threat or as we saw here a way to protect our planeswalkers so yeah this mono black discard deck is certainly one of the many contenders in the current best of one standard meta game so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day